It means that signal. We need more power. And we're back. And now we're again with Elena Christensen. <laughs> And we are talking about, we're going to talk a little about Asmo Day. Yes. A little bit about Z-Man. Uh, what, we might as well get started and sure. talk Asmo Day first. So Asmo Day, we've got some really fun new things coming. Um, as far as releases at the show, uh, we ha had Secrets for Sale, which is a new sort of a hidden role game where you are constantly getting new cards and you have to try to keep track of not only what you think everyone else is, but also what you are. So trying to maintain like who, um, you know, what role you're trying to actually accomplish, what, what goals you're going for. So that's, that's a lot of fun. Um, and we also released Cities of Splendor. Uh, the wide release, I believe, is either during the show or will be this coming week. Um, so that one will be on your tables really soon. Is that one related to Splendor? Yes, it is. It is a Splendor expansion. Um, so it is, there are four expansions in one box. Um, and they all play separately, but they all add something a little different to the game. There are the Cities expansion, which replaces the Noble Tiles with new win conditions. Uh, there are the um, Strongholds, which allow you to... It sort of plays with the, uh, the part of the game where you can reserve cards, but instead of reserving them, you put a Stronghold on it which sort of gives you the opportunity to see what everyone else's plans are if they're putting strongholds on cards, like, oh, they're probably going to go for that. It also allows you to preclude someone else from getting a card, which can be a lot of fun. It also means with two players, there's a lot of, I'm going to put your stronghold on, I'm going to take your stronghold off, I'm going to back and forth. Um, there is also the Orient, which adds two new rows of cards, and those have sort of different abilities than the normal. They're not just gem cards, but some are, like, uh, it adds one more to a gem card you already have, um, or it counts for a gold, to gold token instead of a color. Um, and then the last one is Trading Posts, which adds to the engine building element of the game and sort of like the nobles when you get a certain number of cards it gives you a new ability with that so if you have three white cards you may get an ability like one of the abilities is when you get one gold token now you get two um, or the one gold token counts for two instead so Was that, uh Let's see. Uh, well, we all, okay. A couple other things. Um, so sonar, uh, sonar. We're really excited about that. Is the four-player version of Captain Sonar. And a Captain Sonar, you could play with four ver four players before, um, but the Sonar version of this game is much more um, small-scale, streamlined. Um, it makes it very much a family board game instead of a party board game. Um, so we've been really excited to get that into people's hands because Captain Sonar was so well received at Gen Con last year. And and then, um, and then some people were like, I can't get eight people together at a time. And we're like, we understand. When you can, Captain Sonar. When you can't, Sonar totally suits those needs. Um, and it maintains sort of the radio operator and captain roles, and then folds the other roles into those and makes it a turn-based game rather than real time. Now, is that out or is that coming out? That is out at the show. I believe it is out sometime in the next week if it's not already. So those are kind of our, our big, exciting uh, Asmodee things. We definitely have a few others. We've got Otis, Revised Dice Town, When I Dream is Coming, but we sort of just announced that. Um, so keep an eye out. We've got a lot of fun stuff. We've got a lot of great studios, and they're all really wonderful to work with. Well, let's talk about uh, Z-Man. Z-Man. Excellent. Um, yes, Z-Man had three releases at the show, which was, we've been chomping at the bit to get these out because you know when you've got three games just like sitting and waiting so um, we we were able to bring them all here one of them is jungle which is sort of a um, if you imagine spot it has those little round cards um, five mini games it's got a lot of different things you can do with the cards uh, jungle is kind of like that but it functions off of the circle of life so instead of having different symbols on the cards each card has an animal on it and that animal has sort of power over the other animals in the game. So, you know, hyena eats snake, snake eats mouse, mouse scares elephant, things like that. Huh. Um, so that's one of them. Uh, another one was Spynet, which is a Richard Garfield card game. Uh, plays with a couple of the mechanics um, from Magic the Gathering early, early on. So we've got the, I believe it's the Winston draft. It's, it's what you use where you have three stacks of cards and then a full, or uh, three card areas and then a full stack. Um, and you can pick one up and go, you know what, I don't want that. I don't want that. I do want that. And then you put a new card on top of each pile. So each pile gets more and more 
full of cards, and you also sort of know what, if your opponent takes that pile, you sort of know what they've got in their hand. Um, but that is, yeah, it's, it's kind of a spy-based game. You have a spy agency, and you are trying to succeed in all elements of the agency. So, like, tech, technological um, prowess and things like that. Um, the third one is number nine, and that I like to describe very... Um, passively as a upwards meets Tetris um, because it is it's got these cute little uh, number cards and they're they're different number or um, they're different colors they're very colorful they're very graphic um, and then you uh, and then you stack them up on top of each other but you have to always have a foundation underneath every level you build so you're trying to get as high up as you can but to do that you have to very carefully place these tiles that are all different shapes they're the shapes of the numbers um, so that's a very fun one two minutes to learn. You can play it over and over and over and every time you're going to get different numbers that you have to work with so you're trying to develop a great strategy around those. And then, sorry, go ahead. Uh, age range I believe is, ooh. I don't know what the official box age range is, but it for uh, not for like super, super t little kids, but the pieces are sort of big enough that I think it's like f you have five up, seven up is probably roughly the age range on that. Uh, yeah, for, uh, I have ten years. Ah, yes. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely for a 10-year-old. Um, but yeah, so those are the three that were released. Uh, we've also announced a couple of fun ones. Uh, we've got Majesty coming up. We have um, Gaia Project, which is based off of the Terra Mystica universe. Um, and then the last one is uh, Pandemic Legacy Season 2. Uh, Finally, yes. And yes. Little banners around for that. Yes, banners and band aids. Everyone who did a demo got a band aid that said "Pandemic Legacy Season 2, which was really fun. Everyone's getting inoculated, so. So I know you can't say really hardly too much. It, but uh, uh, how is it related to Season One? It takes place uh, 70, 70, 72 years after the events of Season 1. So if you've played Season 1, you'll be able to sort of see the the elements and the, the story elements of that game in this one. But if you haven't played Season 1, no worries, it doesn't change the game a bit. Um, and everything I've heard is that Season 2 does everything Season 1 does, but even a little bit better than that. So um, they're, they're very different experiences, uh, but I think people will, you know, fans of Season 1 will really attach to this one, and people who haven't even played can absolutely jump in without a problem. It's amazing. So when is that supposed to come out now? I believe that one's going to be October, November. Okay. So before the holidays. It would be interesting if you guys could adapt some other... Uh, IPs in there to uh, the whole season, you know, legacy. Yeah, yeah. And when, so Plaid Hat did Seafall last year, which was a legacy game. Yes. Um, and of course, uh, I'm trying to think. There are there are a couple other legacy games out there that are not ours, but yes. um, it's it's been a really it's a really fun system to work with. And I. You mentioned Plaid Hat. Uh, yeah. What's going on with them? So Plaid Hat uh, released Crossfire at the show, which is a very, very fast-paced hidden deduction game, or a hidden role game. Um, so you, uh, everyone kind of has a role, and then you have to tell everyone what your role is. You can bluff, so it's a bluffing game. Um, but you only have two minutes then to sort of determine what happens. And um, so it's kind of a, got a cash and guns feel where you point your fingers at somebody, um, and then it goes, depending on what your roles actually are, those people get first chance to kill other players, and you're trying to, you have all these different roles, you've got an assassin, you have a VIP, you have an agent trying to protect the VIP. Um, so very, very quick, you can play like 10 times in an hour. <laughs> um, it's, it's very much a, we have 10 minutes until the Uber comes, what are we gonna do? play Crossfire, sure. Um, and it's very, very small, so you can take it anywhere. Um, but they also announced a couple games, uh, Starship Samurai and uh, Stuff Fables. Stuff Fables is one I am so excited for. Um, it's uh, kind of an RPG kids game. Um, certainly very, very accessible to all ages, really. Uh, the way it's been described to me is this is the game that RPG players should bring home to play with their kids. 
Um, so it's it's a storyboard game, which is it has this huge book. It's about this thick, and um, when you open it up, spiral bound. So when you open it up, one side has a board that you're playing with, and each board is different, and the other side has sort of the story, sort of a choose your own adventure. Oh, and it send yes. So so it's got this beautiful spiral bound book, and you flip it open. One side has these kind of different maps, and each one is different. Some is a staircase, another one's a bedroom. The narrative is you are protecting, you are stuffed animals protecting a child uh, from her nightmares, basically. So you're battling through her nightmares to keep her dreams positive. Um, so it is, yeah, it's sort of a choose your own adventure you're working through, and then you, you read a section, you decide what to do, and it sends you to another section. And there are, I believe, three uh, stories. Each one takes about an hour. Um, but you can play through them again and again because you can go down so many different paths. It's a lot of fun. So is it for little kids? Is it for older children just because it's it's uh, got some complicated story elements um, and it's got cute little miniatures of the all the all the little stuffed animals that you're playing as um, really? but wow. definitely great for you know people who are trying to get I think my uh, friend of mine said his, his daughter is f uh, six now and she it would be perfect for this game so um, you know probably yeah uh, five six and up um, you know the older audience you're playing with, the more they'll be able to pick up on kind of the nuances, but it's a very, very accessible game. Excellent. What about in the uh, Dead of Winter? Anything happening? Nope. nope. <laughs> uh, what about Mice and Mystics? Uh, I don't think we have anything going on for Mice and Mystics right now. Um, not, not, nothing off the top of my head. We had a couple Ashes expansions come out here, um, but I think that was kind of the majority of our releases now. When I say there's nothing going on in the Dead of Winter universe, there's nothing going on in the Dead of Winter universe. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's nice going on. <laughs> okay, uh, more to come uh, eventually, someday, maybe? Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, yeah, there's, there's a... We've heard buzz. Okay. <laughs> You've probably heard buzz. Well, it's good to know. Yes. Uh, well, I will let you get back to this. Ah, thank you so much. Thank you so much for taking a few minutes. Yeah, it was a great time. Thanks so much. You need that too. You need more time.